Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for The Last Spell. In this one I got 10 tips and tricks that will help you in your hero builds. So I'm not going to introduce perfect builds or which combos are the most awesome. This is no tier list or anything. This is all about giving you an understanding about the mechanics and what you can do. I am going to uh, feature a couple of examples of course but my intention is more like uh, showing you the ropes so you can create those cool things on your own by understanding the underlying system system. Just wanted to put that up front in case you were expecting something different. I don't want to disappoint you folks. Also, there's timestamps in the description box, so if you're looking for something in particular, go check them out. So let's start with number one, and that's when you're going for the level ups here, always try to go for something green or better if you can. But that's very important, don't stress yourself out if you don't get anything green, as long as it's something your character really, really wants. Also, use those rerolls. I, when I started out with this game, I almost never used rerolls, and uh, I, by now I do deeply regret that. But uh, the gist of it is, if there's anything remotely interesting in the green section, it's usually quite good to pick it up. And if you want to gamble, by all means gamble, but uh, if there's anything that you can use in the green section, it's always better than the gray ones. Because, you know, here you are deciding how much numbers your character will have and uh, it's a very simple thing the higher the numbers the better the character and uh, the only excuse for picking anything gray and uh, common would be that all the other options are totally not used by your build so in this scenario for example i'd rather take the health above the other things even though i must say armor or accuracy would be even more interesting stats for this character Nevertheless, health never hurts, and uh, this is something that applies everywhere. So here's a good example, only common rolls. I do another reroll because, you know, I, I really want to have something different here, and since the t theme of my current team is uh, poison damage, it's perfect like that. Sometimes you gamble and you lose, yes, but it's always worth trying to gamble because you get those rerolls for free every level up, and therefore, I personally think it's a waste. If you're not used them so take always green or better and don't be shy from rolling away and if you are a gambling type of person go for it because most of the time it's worth it so number two when you go for your perks there are times when you really have to pick something but you might not know what you want to pick i personally am a super big fan of oh sorry wrong character super big fan of these traits that increase your bag equipment slots because you know consumables in this game are outright amazing and these consumable traits they're not only giving you extra bag slots so more consumables but also they modify in some way so potions from a distance with no costs that's a pretty pretty good thing more uses on your on your items for pretty much no cost. I became a huge fan of these because sometimes you have to pick something in between and you might be struggling for these. They are pretty good filler. Also, honorable mention to the stuff that gives you an extra trinket slot because trinkets are also pretty amazing. As you see, there can be really cool stats on them. Alrighty, so number three is another really, really cool tip and that's poison is a pretty good team strategy. It's very simple to understand, it's very easy to utilize, and you don't need to stress yourself out. It goes very easy like that. You just need to amp up people with poison damage, the ones that apply the poison, and for those who cannot apply poison, you just go for opportunism, you know? Opportunism gives you a damage increase whenever somebody is inflicted with a negative alteration. That means poison strategies harmonize really easily together. So you have people spreading the poison and you have the other half of your team. You skill up opportunism and you increase your damage by huge numbers while utilizing a powerful strategy. I'm showcasing poison here as a team strategy also to mention it's really worth to go for something that unifies your team. And poison is really easy to understand, easy to uh, pull off, and you only need to spec, uh, spec into these two stats and you already have a really high impact, and you can go even further, but it's up to you. Alrighty, so number four goes into a pretty similar venue like that, and this is uh, going like this. When you're leveling up your character, keep an eye out on which gear that character wants to use 
and level up your perks accordingly. Of course, I mean, I don't mean here like level up range damage when you got a ranged weapon. Not that's uh, not like that. More like check out what kind of weapon, what kind of skills the weapon has. The longbow here, for example, has an isolation skill, so it might be interesting to level up isolation if that's going to be the main weapon. And uh, all the weapons in the game have different um, characteristics. So. For example, here this this thing here can, has a uh, option to stun. The uh, power staff has a courtesy debuffs and therefore also is a good candidate for opportunism. Isolation can be utilized. Sometimes you have a lot of propagation attacks on your kid. Whatever you do, try to check out what kind of uh, secondary stats your, your your layout on the character can utilize well, be it multi-hits, propagation, poison, whatever, and pick the stuff accordingly and stick to it. Like, if you, if you decide that your character is going to rock the longbow, it pays off to stay with a longbow and, and, and put up everything in there to specialize the character as good as possible into that kind of gear. Just as an example here, I'm not talking about longbows in specific, but I'm pretty sure you get the idea. Alrighty, so let's get back to number five, and that's movement points and melee. So whenever you can get in your level ups movement points, they are super attractive for especially for melee characters. Let's switch up to my to my dude here. He only has eight movement points, therefore he's a little bit impaired. And why are movement points important for melee, you might ask yourself, because melee characters always have to get in and get out. Therefore, movement points are a very, very important trait for these. So important, as a matter of fact, that there is even a entire perk dedicated to creating movement points. I also want to point out Relentless is a per is an amazing perk. Creating movement points whenever you attack something in melee. Brilliant stuff. So, in a nutshell, if you get movement points offered for a character that's supposed to be melee, it's a no-brainer. Pick them up, be it gear or be it perks. If they are offered to somebody who's already a ranged character, Here's another thing. It is very, very useful to have high movement points also on a ranged character, because sometimes, this is a good opportunity here to showcase what I mean, sometimes you are either done with one front or your your characters were shuffled badly and there's more pressure on one front than you thought. A high amount of movement points allows you to move one hero from this end of the map to that end of the map quite quickly. I mean, there are plenty of methods for movement in this game teleportation, gateways, and all those things. But as a uh, brute force method, movement points always allow you to catch stragglers quite well, and therefore they are good to have, but not nearly as good as for a melee character. So number six is really easy and goes really quickly over action points. Whenever you can get action points, pick them. Sometimes in the level up uh, selection, you get lucky enough to pick up an action point they get you get uh, them sometimes as a opportunity and really just pick them up whenever you can with a gear sometimes there is uh, action points on gear like uh, here this is a uh, no sorry that was the wrong one um here this is a wonderful example because this comes without any downsides often gear with action points though comes with downsides so well you should really always uh, consider if the cost is worth it but if it's ever offered in your in your uh, level up things go for it there's nothing beaten action points simply because even when you're done with attacks there's almost always something that you can do with the remaining action points especially when you got a secondary weapon there's i've never hit the point where i had the feeling as if this character had too many action points Alrighty, number seven specialize your characters and damage types this is really, really important, pretty easy to understand, and uh, probably, though, you're, you're thinking not the same what I'm thinking about. So, the thing here is, when, when you look at the weapons, there's melee damage, magical damage, and range damage at this game. The thing is, some enemies are really hard to kill with anything else than the damage than the, that they're vulnerable against. Some enemies have very, very high armor values. Melee is the best thing against that, because physical damage deals 
200% damage to armor. There are enemies that have insanely high values of resistance, you will need magic damage to counter that. And at times you also will have situations where you really don't want to get close to enemies and they still have a high resistance, that's where ranged damage comes into play, because there are also exploding enemies for example. Also, keep in mind, range damage is very, very highly impacted by dodge and looks a little bit worse than the other stats because physical damage has a bonus, magical damage has a bonus, range damage looks like it has a uh, only an impairment. Range damage is a lot about utility. Ranged weapons in this game have an amazing array of utility. I personally found them the most utility heavy weapons in the whole game. I'm not sure if I'm wrong about that. Please correct me here if I stand wrong. But uh, ranged weapons are really, really versatile and they offer a lot of uh, crazy things. AoE stun, poison, and uh, undodgeable attacks. Attacks that pierce the armor. There's a lot of uh, goodness and with ranged weapons, I, I really must emphasize it. Check out the specific weapon because every weapon has a different quality. You know, the hand crossbow goes below, has uh, armor ignoring qualities and uh, and go uh, and poison. The longbow, as you see here, has isolation damage and stun. The short bow has an undodgeable attack. So does the rifle, and it has a single target high damage nuke. So there is always an identity behind. Uh, weapons in this game generally, but with ranged weapons it's especially important to note that. Alright, enough about that, let's head on over to number 8. Create teams or duos, so depending on how far you are. So I personally always have certain heroes that go well together. So for example here we have two fronts, so I'd like to have people that work well together. So how to put up a good team and a good or a good duo. So personally I always go like this. I try to have ranges covered. So always have bring at least one person with a high range attack, one per one or I should rather say weapon. One weapon with a really high range, one weapon with a medium range, and one weapon with a short range, bring enough AoE, bring enough varying damage types, make sure that every team has at least one physical and one magical damage source. Either way, you know, you, you need that stuff. And there's a lot of things that you can get into there. I don't want to give you the impression of if there's a a one standard solution, but a pretty good thing is combo up one person with short and medium range and one person with long and medium range or long and short range depending on your playstyle goes really well and make sure you have melee and magic to be sure that you have a good counter against these enemies and usually you get quite good the advantage out of that the rest comes really off of your own playstyle so number nine is another thing keep your team varied you know you might come to the point where you notice that you are an insane lover of melee weapons and you start to gear out your team like 80% uh, of the weapons in your team are melee weapons. That would be really bad for you in the long run because as soon as a wave is composed of enemies that are really strong against melee, you will struggle hard. Ideally, mix up your team that you have a equal a equal mix of ranged melee and uh, magical weapons and ideally bring as many different weapons as possible. Try to avoid to have two longbows, two staves or whatever because I personally made the, the experience that a, a, a good mixture of options is really good. But if you notice that your strategy is really awesome with all uh, range people featuring a hand crossbow or whatever because it synergizes insanely well with your strategy go for it it's amazing you you just have to keep an eye out on having a thought on your gear you know and keep it varied and mixed to be able to beat enemies that have high resistances in certain directions. All right, and the last thing on number 10 is look for harmonic combinations of items. You know, I know this sounds a little bit uh, a little bit easy to say, but I want to showcase here one thing so you get an idea. Here I use a okay, it's a rusty hammer, but melee weapon and the staff and this is a somewhat anti-intuitive combo because I'm using a melee weapon and a magic weapon because, you know, 
a moment ago I said keep it uh, keep it together but sometimes you discover things like that here I practically only use the stunning entrance of my staff which is a teleport skill whenever I kill something with that uh, with that ability I teleport onto the spot where the enemy was and you see those orange grids that's the that's the range of that skill you need to invest one movement point but a moment ago, remember number five, movement points and fighters? This weapon allows me to give myself a huge bonus in mobility because I can teleport wherever I want, bonk the enemies with my hammer, and then walk out. If you want to keep it a little bit more specialized, for example, you could give your could give that character a sword, which comes with a lot of mobility skills on their own, or a pistol. There's a lot of things where you notice that sometimes it's even really smart to have the main weapon, the main source of damage, for example, physical damage, but have a sidearm that features a different damage type and you pick it up for the synergy that it has with your main weapon. Because I personally made the experience, whatever character I play, they utilize on my end like 75 to 80 percent of their action points on one weapon and only a small portion on the other weapon and you can sometimes use that even by mixing a different damage type into it. This can sometimes be super good because Albin here as a matter of fact can deal out physical and magic damage due to that. And when you check out the character development here you can also opt out, uh, on to not specializing into damage types whatsoever and only skill up raw damage. That is also a really really valid strategy here. You, there you go. This uh, type of damage will increase any type of damage. There's a lot of build variety in this game. That's why I didn't want to give you the impression that there's one correct way. There's many ways to break the game. Okay, so I'll leave it up to you what kind of uh, combos with weapons you will find. I just wanted to give you one thought, train of thoughts to not follow, and I hope you found that all quite helpful. So leave your comments down below, add your own tips and tricks for character development into the comment section down below. Ask away, I always love to hear from you folks as you all might know, and leave a thumbs up on that video if you found it helpful and think more people should be seeing that, this is the way to show the algorithm that you think so. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to support, it's a dirty cheap way, it helps a lot, and it doesn't cost you anything. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified about things that I do in the future, and most importantly, have a wonderful day, and enjoy gaming. See you soon.